Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I have a small office in Milwaukee and I'm here to talk to you today about this lovely plant right next to me called lungwort or pulmonaria officinalis. There's a different lungwort I did a video on and that's a lichen. This is lungwort the plant. So big difference. Make sure your lungwort you're looking at is a plant and not a lichen for this this purpose. And these are generally found in grasslands, damp woods, and hedgerows in Britain, and they're wildly distributed as a garden ornamental. That's how I got mine. It just happened to be in a friend's garden. I said, oh, I want some of that. And it's easy to take a little chunk of that and transplant it into your own garden, and then it grows quite vigorously. Um, it's native to Western Asia and Europe. There are 18 wild species. The one most used for uh, medicine is the pulmonera, Pulmonaria officinalis. It's a high mucilage plant, which means it's got a lot of slimy goo inside. And that's really great for chest and lung complaints, for coughing, especially things like chronic bronchitis, uh, whooping cough, or to support asthma and emphysema, especially in combination with other respiratory herbs, such as colt's foot, uh, mullein, rosemary, thyme, all those things would go in a really nice formula or tea um, to help with those con conditions. Um, phytochemicals, it's got a lot of those in here. You've got saponins, you've got tannins, vitamin C, salicylic acid, rutin, carotenes, allantoin, alkaloids, and other fatty acids. Um, the parts that are generally used are generally the leaves. These, uh, these funny spotted leaves here. You can see the, the old-fashioned doctrine of signatures thought that looked like a diseased lung, so that's why they started using that. But uh, it also is actually quite medicinal because it's got so many of those great phytochemicals in it. Um, also, the flowering tops of flowers can be used for certain things as well. Um, its actions, it's very antioxidant, antimicrobial properties, it's generally anti-irritant and soothing, it's astringent, it's demulcent, diaphoretic, diuretic, emollient, mildly expectorant. <clears throat> the mucilage definitely benefits a sore throat. Um, the, <clears throat> the, the antimicrobial properties um, may be because it can help reduce biofilms. Um, which are like the bacteria building little castles that antibiotics and other treatments can't get through. A lot of times plants can. Um, the diuretic effects can also be helpful in treating chronic UTIs or kidney issues as part of a larger formula. And it's been used for digestive complaints such as indigestion or diarrhea as well. Externally, um, it's been used to help stop bleeding in minor wounds in a pinch. It's similar kind of to its cousin Comfrey. Um, people have made a distilled water out of um, lungwort and use that as an eye wash. It uh, also is um, one of those food, food-like medicines. In fact, this has been a food. The leaves have been traditionally eaten both raw in salads or cooked as a pot herb in stews and soups and the young green leaves can be cooked with other greens um, but they are kind of a hairy flavor <laughs> it's definitely a hairy plant if you look really close you can see little little hairs there on the surface of this spotted funny looking leaf it's it's <clears throat> somewhat soft but not like like the kind of soft you would want to use down there if you're out in the woods. This might be a bit prickly on, on the softer tissues, but uh, it does have little hairs in there. Um, it's got a slimy mouth feel is another thing if you're going to start eating this and you've got issues with things that have a lot of mucilage. This has definitely got some mucilage in there and as a food it, it comes out too. Um, it's noticeable. Let's see. It's also an ingredient in the drink vermouth, I believe. Um, usually lungwort herb is used as a hot tea <clears throat> for seasonal colds, flus, or bronchitis. Um, usually it's used 
about a tablespoon of dried herb per cup. Um, you want to bring that to a boil and let it seep, seep covered slowly for about t 20 minutes, um, probably three or more cups a day if you're using it for, say, a, a cold or a, a bit of bronchitis. But you don't want to really use this more than two weeks. Um, while there are no known hazardous side effects other than some people who just happen to be allergic to it, um, you may only want to take this short term and not use it as a staple food regularly. The borage plants, the whole family is known to contain a small amounts of liver, liver damaging perolizidine alkaloids, otherwise known as PAs. And many have stopped using this whole family internally in kind of a knee jerk reaction to the scientific discovery that these liver damaging alkaloids are in there. And even though there's been past widespread traditional use and no real problems noted from that, um, it's probably wanting to be safer, probably want to keep to maybe less than two weeks of use in this. And probably if you're pregnancy, pregnant or nursing, just skip it altogether. Um, <clears throat> in some of the literature out there, they say that lungwort specifically has been recorded free of PAs that um, a lot of people thought that this doesn't have any PAs in it, but other science that I've read is, has found PAs detected in lungwort itself. Um, so I would say it's not an exception to that rule, but they're, they're not that strong, really. They're really limited, and so it's probably not a problem unless you already have a lot of liver damage or you use these in high quantities for a long time. Um, the, the, the poison is in the, the dose. The dose makes the poison, as they say. And this has probably got a very little or almost none. So I would say go ahead and you want to pick these leaves off and dry them up and we'll make a tea. Let's do it. Now these are quite easy to pick. You don't even need scissors. You can just kind of snap them off with your fingers. This is uh, totally different. That's a little red currant. So these do not have berries. These have little purple flowers that turn into these dead purple flowers. But let's just go ahead and pick some of these lovely, lovely spotted bits. Um, when you're picking herbs, it's just a reminder, you don't want to just go and ravage the whole plant or the whole patch. Don't be greedy. And kind of try to make it so that when you leave after harvesting, that th there's, there's enough left that it'll come back and regenerate and that you're not just, especially if you're out harvesting from the wild, that you haven't just raped and pillaged and ran off and left the earth barren. So just pick what you need. Don't be greedy. And leave it so that nobody can really tell that you were there grabbing. This seems like a good amount for now. Let's dry that out and I'll meet you back in the kitchen and make some tea. Look at these guys. They're quite lovely. You can see they look quite simpler, similar to comfrey or other borage type family plants. But they've got these really pretty little spots on them. And if you look really close, you might be able to see the fuzzy little hairs all over this thing. Let's hope. <laughs> see you in the kitchen. And here we are in the kitchen. I have got a pot of boiling water here. I've got uh, some dried lungwort. This is probably how you'll probably use it if you get it from a vendor or if you want to keep it long term. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I am a real big fan of fresh herbs though. So I'm just going to make my tea with regular old fresh leaves. Here's the lungwort. Kind of break that up. Throw some in. I'm not measuring this. I'm just going with a kind of a traditional bunch, putting a bunch in there. 
<laughs> the bunch is just what you want it to be. What about a bunch? I'm going to add in some thyme, fresh thyme as well. Thyme is really great, very antimicrobial, very soothing. A lot of vol um, just really great oils in there that go up into your respiratory tract. Also rosemary now, putting some rosemary in. A big mullein leaf. Well, actually a small mullein leaf, but <laughs> a small mullein leaf. Another excellent respiratory herb. Rosemary is one of the best, I think, for bronchitis. Nice rosemary steam is my go-to for bronchitis. But uh, this is also some fennel, some fresh fennel, just for a nice flavoring. Um, We'll add some honey and stevia at the end. Let's give that a little stir. Turn that down to very low or off. Let that go ahead and steep for about 20 minutes before we use it. Actually, that's... Yeah, let's just turn that off. Come back in a little bit and we'll strain that out and have some tea. And okay, this has been sitting around for about 20 minutes steeping with our fresh lungwort, mullein, rosemary, fennel, and thyme. You can see everything is wilted down. We've got some color in there. So let's have some tea see what all this is like. Now I like to use this, it's a, a funnel with a strainer bottom in it. I find it to be so useful for so many things in the kitchen, including loose leaf teas. You just make up all your tea in a big pot and just strain that right through there into your tea receptacle. This is a blue willow teapot. There's an interesting legend about the blue willow china. I found fascinating when I was a kid, so I've collected these funny things. And there we go. A pot, a lovely pot full of a lung supporting lungwort tea. Look at that beautiful light tea color. Now you can do this with the dried lungwort, it's probably the most common um, use, but fresh is fine too. I like to add a little bit of stevia, a little honey to make it a bit more fun, but not too sweet. A lot of sweetness, a lot of sugar in your tea is not great for you either. Oh, this honey is quite firm. Honey, while it is all natural, is still, is still just a very concentrated sugar. It will make the medicine go down a lot easier, but it also, the bacteria, that are messing with you really love it when your blood is full of sugar. It's like like growth hormone for them. There it is, a beautiful cup, lungwort tea. It's quite nice. Mostly I'm tasting a lot of the fennel and the thyme and the rosemary. Those are very aromatic versus the uh, lungwort, which is kind of more grass-like, <laughs> not great tasting as, as far as by itself. But when you add some of the other aromatic herbs in there, it really is quite tasty. Very palatable. And I can feel a soothing effect going down my neck as I swallow. I think you'll like it. Give it a try. That's lungwort, the plant the tea. 
And just for a little extra fun, this is indeed radioactive dishware. We've got this black light here, and if you shine it on this Vaseline ware, it will glow from the radiation incorporated into that glass. It doesn't happen, regular glass at all. Just this crazy radioactive glass that used to be a thing. Yeah, isn't that fun? <laughs> So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to actually go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbs for your condition. For one thing, you might not really understand what your true diagnosis is. You might think it's just a little bit of this or a little bit of that and it can be easily cured from some herbs that you saw on the internet. When it's really something very serious and you're missing it and it could be fatal. And there's also interactions between herbs and drugs. And there are contraindications between some of the problems you might be having and the herbs you think you need for that. So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you really know what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I have a small office in Milwaukee. I love you. Hey, and if you could, please like, subscribe, and share. That way I'll show up in your feed more often. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me in making more of these videos. And once again, the name of my practice is Passion for Healing Naturopathic. If you want to look me up and give me a call, I'd love to talk to you about what ails you. See you later. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look at it, Rosie. Go get him. Where did he go? There he is. Oh my goodness. Look at him. So much noise in my head that I can't go back to sleep And I don't know what to do I don't know what to do Another day of work for another quarter dollar Just two car payments and the house is underwater And I don't know what to do I don't know